All right, we're looking at iodine clock part two, where we're looking at the effects of temperature on the rate law. Now, this is where we're going to use the Arrhenius equation. And when we use the Arrhenius equation, we have to realize that we have a, um, a different view than what we did before. Now, before we were looking at the concentration dependence. Now here, we're going to hold our concentration constant. They're all going to be 0 0.018 uh, molar, and we are going to vary the temperature. So when we take and we vary the temperature, we are going to see that how long the reaction takes is going to change. And we remember here is that as, as the temperature goes up, the rate is going to go up. And we know this is an exponential function. So we're going to take and we are going to graph this and see what we can figure out. So first of all, we need to get our data typed in. We're going to have three runs, runs one, two, and three here. And we're going to have the temperature in degrees Celsius. Again, our concentrations are the same, 0 0.018 molar. We're not going to vary them. You're going to have your reaction time in seconds. And we remember that our reaction rate is going to be consistently this 2.94 times 10 to the minus 4 molar divided by time on your or in your Excel cell spreadsheet, you need to take the times 10 to and replace it with this capital E. This E is going to be equivalent to times 10 to something. So putting our values in. Now, once we have done this, we remember, first of all, that our rate here is equal to K times the concentration of iodide to the first times peroxide to the first. And you should have gotten both one and one as your X's and Y's from the concentration dependence. And now what we need to do is we need to take and plug this in and solve for our k value. So to do that, we realize here that our rate is going to equal, so let me just erase some stuff here for a second. Okay. And let's go back and let's he here realize that if we take our rate, and we divide it by the concentration of our iodide and the peroxide, 0 0.018 times 0 0.018. Now, if we're going to actually do that with Excel, we need to remember we're going to need parentheses, and we can always use Excel to do our calculation for us. This is going to equal K. So if we take and do that, we can generate a new column here that is going to equal K. So I'm going to take and just come down here and get myself a new column. And this column is going to equal our rate, which is here, divided by 0 0.018 times 0 0.018 concentrations in every run. And so when I do this, I'm going to get a K value. So this is going to be K for run one. Um, I can do the same thing for the other ones. And I can take and set this one here equal. to this value divided by 0 0.018 times 0 0.018, such that I actually fixed this correctly here. Sorry about that. And I can do that for the third one as well. And when I do it for the third one as well, I'm going to have my k values for the three different runs. divided by 0 0.018 times 0 0.018. And I have my three Ks. Now, what am I going to graph? I need to graph the temperature in Kelvin. In fact, I need to graph 1 over the temperature in Kelvin on my x-axis and my K or the natural log of K on the Y. So let's generate this next chart here. So here, let's put temperature in Kelvin and K. If I put temperature in Kelvin, I'm going to go up here and take my temperature in Celsius which is our value here of cell B2. And I'm going to take and I'm going to add 273.15. That to get my temperature in Kelvins. So now if I take and fill that, I've got my temperature in Kelvins and I've got K. Well, I really need 1 over the temperature in Kelvins and the natural log of K for my Arrhenius plot. So to do that again, we can use our Excel for our um, math here, I take one over this um, cell, and I can take and drag and fill through. I can take this one and set it equal to the natural log of my k value. 
And when I do that, I'm going to get a negative. This happens to be a small number, so my natural logs of k are going to be negative values. And now what I have is what I need to plot for the Arrhenius equation. For the Arrhenius equation, I need to remember here that if I plot the natural log of the rate constant k um, versus 1 over the temperature, I know that the slope here is going to equal minus e sub a over r plus the uh, y-intercept b. And this is going to be y is equal to m and 1 over t is x plus b. And I have a nice linear form of my equation. And I'm going to use this to determine the activation energy for this reaction. So to do this, I'm going to take and click and um, drag across 1 over t and k. I'm going to go to insert. I'm going to pick a scatter plot. I'm going to realize my scatter plot is a little on the messy side, and I need to fix this. So we're going to fix this two ways. We're going to get rid of the empty space, and we're going to shift the location of the x-axis. Both of these, believe it or not, are y-axis problems. If we take and we right-click on one of the label points on the y-axis, and I click on Format Axis, I can do two things. I can take, and I can switch my minimum. My minimum here is 1.5. Well, that doesn't help. I'm going to switch my maximum to 2. The top of the value is the maximum. And as soon as I switch that to 2, I'm going to take and shift my data point. Let's go back and switch that to minus 2, like my IQ is normal. There we go. Now, I need to switch where the x-axis crosses at. And notice here, it crosses at automatic. Automatic is going to be at the top, or it was at the 0, 0. What we want it to do is to take and cross at the bottom. Well, the bottom of my axis is minus 4.5. And if I switch that to minus 4.5, my x-axis is going to be back down now where it belongs. So finishing that, I need to go up here and make sure I add in my chart element. So I'm going to put in the axis titles. Um, I do not need a legend. There's only one set of data being graphed. So we should, once we have the titles in, we know that is what that is. And then I need to add the trend line. When I add the trend line, make sure we go to the trend line options and we go to more options because that is going to allow us to scroll down and display the equation on the chart. I tend to grab the equation and shift it to some place where I can see it. So I'm going to put it up there. And once I've done this, I now have the linear equation for this reaction. How does this help? Well, this helps because if I have graphed the natural log of the rate constant k equal to minus e sub a divided by the gas constant r multiplied by 1 divided by the temperature in kelvins plus some intercept b. This tells me that my slope here, my slope for this reaction, which has a value from my graph of minus 76, 95.3, is going to equal minus e sub a over r. If I can do this, what I'm trying to do for this whole thing is find the activation energy e sub a. Please remember that r for this is going to equal 8.314 joules per mole Kelvin. If I take and I multiply my slope value minus 7695.3 or whatever it is obviously you get from your graph by 8.314 i'm going to get the e sub a in units of joules per mole all right convert that to kilojoules compared to what it should be and you've got this thing made